before him and say, you're great and you're holy. Come on, say it with me. You're great and you're holy. Why don't you take your crown and throw it down? You're great and you're holy. Cast the crowns down. You're great and you're holy. You're so great and you're holy. You're great and holy. You're awesome. You're awesome and you're holy. Help me, help me. You're awesome and you're holy. And you're holy. You're awesome and you're holy. Hallelujah. Oh, I just want to worship him. I just want to worship him. Oh, I want to worship him. I want to worship him. I want to worship him. Are there any worshipers in the room? Any worshipers in the room? You're so holy. So holy. You're 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 so holy. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Say it with me, come on. Great are you, Lord. You're bigger than the devil. Great are you, Lord. You're bigger than my problem. Ghost. If you've got the Spirit of God in your life, the Bible says it with one accord. Your praise is an idol. It could be you. It could be what others are thinking. It could be your trouble. And praise is to bring down every idol, every high heel. Because when you praise, the enemy decides that he needs to open up your portfolio. He needs to start inundating your mind with thoughts, how you feel. Whether you are holy or not, whether you done, you righteous, that's the enemy's job. Because we're in a battle. Nobody goes to a football game to see one team play against itself. And a lot of times, we that are called to into Christ, when we worship, we are really only worshiping against ourselves. But you don't go see a basketball team run up and down the floor, five men talking about they playing an invisible player. You and I are not beating the air, but we're fighting the enemy. So every distraction, mental, physical, stuff that don't matter, is something that says, I want to be bigger than the words coming out of your mouth, which should be the words coming out of your heart. So in a, in a good fight, when the other team put pressure on you, you got to put pressure back. Why the enemy defeats a lot of people is they won't praise the Lord until they feel better. But it ain't a feeling. It's spirit. Oh, my God. If you can see what I see right now, just look how it goes. And the quieter you are, that's how the enemy know I got that person in check. When you play basketball, football, 
the, the last thing you want to hear somebody over there woofing about is how they got you in check. Ain't that ain't right about it. So you know what you do? You got to push back. Well, in the warfare we're in is called praise and worship. It ain't called sit down and be sung to. It's called praise and worship. But there is an invisible enemy that says, I'll be dog if you get to open your mouth wide. I'll be dog if you get to let it come from out of the depths of your soul. So I'm going to keep putting on you how guilty you are. How stuff ain't right in your life. So you can't make that an idol. But I'm here to tell you the praise that God wants is the one that extols him. It goes over the top. Hallelujah. And you know if you've given him your best. Whether you're in church or you're at home, God knows the heart. He says, if it ain't from the heart, save it. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would shout, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't nobody get mad but the devil when you praise the Lord. I feel lightheaded. Thank you. That's the Holy Ghost. I feel lightheaded. Because praising Him is like drinking. And if you ever drink, it only takes one little shot to get you to start saying, I'm going to calm down, or I'm going to get some boldness, or I'm going to get some happy. I ain't saying go out and practice. I'm saying if you ever, be honest, ain't nobody going to ask you to raise your hand, but if you ever had any type of alcohol in your body, all it takes is a little bit to get you to know it's in my bloodstream. Yeah. And usually when you get a little bit, you want a little bit more. Yeah. Don't lie, when you was out there, ain't nobody said give me a teaspoon of alcohol. Give me a shot and get, hit me another. Hit me with a double. Because now it's getting a feeling so good yeah, that you, you know, you get tipsy. Come on. You feeling giddy. You feeling happy. You feel like laughing. You forgot come about on. some problems. But when we worship, it's drinking from the fountain of come God, on. the Holy Ghost. And the more you drink, Another round, heaven, please. A round for everybody. <laughs> Give everybody a round. Now, now, you don't refuse. Somebody send you over a bottle of champagne. Come on. Praise him. That's what it is. He said, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Somebody said, how you do that, preacher? Praise the Lord. Open your mouth and praise Him. Because when you drink liquor, you open your mouth and guzzle it. You don't set that clap your hands at it and it get in you. You put it inside you. Come on. The way this works, you got to open your mouth and pray. When you praise, God comes in that and fills you. That's why so many dry people, they won't drink God's. Drinking, it's hard to get you all up tight and offended. <laughs> I wish I could get an come amen. Why yeah. yeah. so many uptight people? They ain't drunk in a while. You hear me? Oh, I don't know why I'm talking about that, but I guess it go with my message. <laughs> when you, I say when you, because hopefully it's a when you. Nobody had to tell you 
What flavor to drink? I wish I could get amen. amen. If you like that color, brown liquor, <laughs> you said, give me some of that. You wouldn't put your hand over the top of it. Now nah, don't pour me no more. I'm afraid I might lose myself. How many of y'all got so silly? Folks had to put you in the car and take you home. But you come to church and you find everything to think about what? Pour me another drink, Holy Ghost. Come on. Pour me another drink. I need to get drunk in the spirit. Come on. When somebody's drunk, they don't care about their bills. That's why the lights get cut off. They don't care about their house. They ain't got no cares in the world. That's why a lot of us Christians need to be drunk in the spirit. And we'll quit letting everything stop us. Fill me with your spirit. He says you have not because you ask not. This generation. Fill me with your spirit. Yeah. Pray for the spirit like you prayed for that house. Pray for that car. Pray for that companion. Pray for that job. Ask for the spirit like you asked for that new clothes. Ask him to help you with that promotion on the job. Give me your spirit like you ask for natural things. He says we have not because we ask not. God wants to get to this generation without measure. Some of y'all ain't been drunk in a while. A whole lot of people ain't been drunk in a while. This kind, this spirit will make you quit drinking. It'll make you put cigarettes down. It will make you because it will satisfy your thirst. Oh, nobody want to hear that, but that's the truth. It'll quench your thirst for strange flesh. Things God said, don't do that no more. You ain't the only one that had, had the Jones before. But I'm going to tell you what breaks it. Church is only a place you're supposed to go and hear this kind of message. But the Holy Spirit is what is going to quench that thirst and that appetite in your life. That devil trying to get you to live beneath your privilege. Be ye filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Sing songs. Make melody in your heart. There's some fine groove. You and Jesus and the angels. Groove with the Lord. Groove with him when he in church or out. Church ain't no place to come pretend like you know this strange idol. He's a living, breathing God. He's alive and he's in this room today. He'll heal your heart. He'll fix things. Get drunk in the spirit. Start drinking again. Start drinking again. Start drinking again. New wine. New wine. And he just simply said, I can't put new wine in old vessels. Old vessels mean old mindsets. Come on. Old mind. New wine. New wine. Come on. God knew in this world you was going to have lust. You were going to have temptations. You were going to have trial. You were going to have circumstances. You were going to have idolatry come at you. Things come at your mind stuff to, to rob you but God say I got something for the devil they get full of this new wine the Holy Ghost not just church but this power they will walk into newness of life hallelujah time for some of you to start drinking again you 
said, well, I quit drinking when I came to church. Well, you don't quit drinking. You just change drinks. Like, you know, I quit dancing when I came to church. You don't stop dancing. You change partners. Those of you who used to like to drink a lot in the world, come and drink. God got more spirit than Byron's got liquor. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm telling you the truth. Those of the drug culture, you are searching for something that only comes through the spirit. God got more spirit than all the cannabis stores on corners. Why do you think there's so many of them? Because people want something from another world. They hungry. They say, go to the jungle, chop it down, bring it to my city. I live in a good part of town. Used to be in the ghetto. Used to be in the ghetto, in the block. People with Cadillacs and floppy hats undercover, but now it's in up across America. Why? Because the people are hungry, and the people are saying we thirst. That's why they're popping up, popping up, popping up. But I'm here to tell you that God got an answer for your thirst. Woo! Nobody beating you up because you thirsty. But why die of thirst? Why die of thirst? You thirsty. But why die of thirst? What do you got to say about a man that dies of thirst? And the water's right there in front of him. And this whole generation is dying of thirst. And the water of life is as near as your praise. And he here today is the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of the living God. I wish you could say amen. Amen. I wanted God to get the glory before I, I got into a little bit. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. You need more of the Holy Ghost. You need more of the Spirit. You need more of God's anointing. You need the, more of the That's the problem. That's the problem with the whole world that will fix every problem you and I got I know you can't tell another human being that if I had they'll say no you need other stuff but you need the Holy Ghost you don't need money as much as you need the Holy Spirit Isaiah says you can come and buy wine and milk without money and price wine because it give you joy milk because it give you nourishment and say you ain't got to pay for it amen folks say all the church want is their money no that's not true the, the building, amen, is to keep so you can come in on the heat and the cold. But what God got for you, you don't have to pay for with nothing more than faith in Christ, his blood. You can, buy, you can buy milk without money, without price. You can buy joy. Everybody paying for joy now. Yeah. Broke looking for joy. Come on. All the places jumping up in the world because people, they, they need joy. Spending long money to go have joy. Drive all the way to Vegas. Why? Because we need some joy. But joy and righteousness, true, comes from one place. It ain't payday Friday. It ain't through physical contact. It's through the Holy Ghost. You were made for worship. Your body is the temple. Now you can take it and do something else with it, but your body is the temple. Come on. You supposed to be a church, and a church supposed to have praise in it. Yeah. What kind of worship services you got going on in your church? If the service is dry, then you need to change the agenda. Quit putting pressure on other folk in their churches. How's the church service going? How's the worship going? Your body is the temple. 
God walks in the believer. And once you come to understand that, that devil, he, he has become terrified of you. Just because all the other churches, individuals are closing up, that ain't reason for, no reason for you to close up. I'm keeping the lights on in my church. I'm keeping the lights on in my church. And you got to learn how to have church by yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Are you hearing me? The church go with me everywhere I go. Sometimes it's quiet in the church. But the Lord lives in my church because it's my temple. I wish I'd have known that when I was running crazy with sinners. But I know it now. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And you can't blame another person for you not being on fire. Any more than you can blame for anything else. They ain't got the breath for your next breath. That comes from God. And when you know your body is the temple, and God says, I want to dwell in a clean temple. That's why we do what we do to keep our temple clean. Because every time I decide to have worship, that's a Sunday morning. I don't care if it's a Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday. That's a Sunday morning. And I want him to come to my temple. It ain't that we can't go do what sinners do. Are you listening? But I want the Lord to come to my church. Both going to church looking for the Lord to be there. When they should bring him. Then he says, you got to open up the doors for him to come in. The Holy Ghost is a gentleman. Oh, I'm feeling that drunk feeling again. Whew. Even though he's God, he ain't going to kick your door down to come in your house. So he says... Open up, O oh ye gates, and the everlasting Lord will come in. You know what the gates are? The gates is your mouth, is your lips. Okay. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, strong in battle. And the Lord will come in. Folk want God to wrestle them in a headlock and come in. He don't work like that. Your mouth is a gate. It's a gate to peace. It's a gate to hope. Oh, y'all said, I'm preaching. You preach. I'm on. sitting on this stool because I feel the spirit in this house. You know how you let the Lord in your church? You open up the door. Be on it, but he ain't going to bust in it. Come on in, Lord. Forgive me of my sin. Let's get that behind us. Now, let's have fellowship. But you got to do with your... How did salvation come? With you looking at the preacher? With you just clapping? You had to confess with your mouth and believe something in your heart. And then the Lord says, I will come in, make my abode. Well, if you want to have more power and more victory with him, quit looking at the problem. You know the best time to praise him? when things are not going your way. Anybody can praise the Lord when everybody's clapping them, telling them how good they are, and praise, yeah, thank you, thank you. But you know when God knows, when the, when the heavy loads up on you. Don't forget that. That's from the Spirit of the Lord. The gate is your mouth. And even though the Lord owned the church, which is your body, he ain't going to force himself inside. They ain't going to do it. You got to say, Lord, come in. Lord, fill me. Lord, I'm discouraged today. Lord, heal my mind. He'll let you be discouraged. Lord, I'm suicidal. He'll let you jump off the cliff. You're going to have to change that by your confession. Lord, I feel like I won't go somewhere and just get drunk. He'll say, drink my spirit. We blame God and waiting on him and put him to the test. Well, when the Lord get ready. The Lord ready. He wants you to open your mouth and say what he said in this word about your situation. If you don't want your situation to work out, then don't say that to the Lord about it. He'll let you suffer. 
in ignorance. When the Holy Ghost is there, he got more than one tassel on his head. He got three or four. He looking like an owl with glasses on. He's so smart. He know how to figure every problem, every situation. He know how to teach you. He know everything. But he said, you got to call on me in the day of trouble. Call on me. He ain't coming because you, 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 you good. That's self-righteousness. And that's where most people get locked up behind works. Well, I'm doing all I can do. No, you ain't. You ain't opening your mouth and declaring who the Lord is. You're not having done all the stand, standing there for in faith. And faith speaks. I'm doing everything I know. No, you ain't. Your confession says you're not. You would do less if your confession was right. Everybody, I done done all I know to do. Well, I got something else for you. Get God's principle and then say it. Because he says my word will not return unto me void. You can think it all you want. You can beat the preacher coming to church and God will still let you be broke, busted, and disgusted. And the enemy will still come in and rob you. That's called religion, children. Somebody watching me, you hear me? That's called religion. Pious look. And all this, all this pious look. I'm being humble. God said, that ain't humble. That's huge. That's pride. Yeah. You call yourself being humble and you won't open your mouth? That's the devil's lie. I'm being, I'm being humble. I'm just being. I ain't got to do all that. Who told you that? Come on. The devil. 